Hi, my name is Jacob Adams. I'm the creator of Evolution Training. You can go to evolutiontraining.net to get a free download now. And I am the, also the author of Your Divine Romance, Bold Action, Meditation, and Pure Love. I help people just like you get to the next level in their fitness, in their energy, joy, fulfillment, and leadership. I truly believe that leadership has one of the toughest goal in leadership is to master one's self. And a lot of my work is centered in that fitness, centered in mastering oneself, right? I, I'm developing what's called common sense self-mastery because if you look at something like Gary Vee, for example, is watching him live right now and he's like, work, that's, that's a secret work, right? And so that's not groundbreaking at all. We all know that we got to work, but we can sometimes forget that that is the key formula. We sometimes get caught up in our childhood wounds and our trauma and our past mistakes and our baggage and we we get so caught up in our stuff and we start feeling some type of way just maybe you're making some little chicken you start feeling some type of way and then what do you know it you start regressing you stop producing to the level that you need to do as a leader as an entrepreneur in your fitness journey you can't have that so common sense self mastery is what I have so my question is this have you ever wondered who exactly you are? Like who exactly, what are your strengths? Oh, maybe like Gary Vee posed a question, you know, he's always saying, it don't, don't focus who, on who you are not, focus on who you are. Admittedly, I didn't know how to do this one video, but I was like, well, how do I express this? And so I'm just gonna trust myself. I'm gonna trust myself. Robert Rodriguez, the the director of Once Upon a Time in Mexico, he goes, you know, you may not know how to do what you gotta do, but he, his actors come up to him and is like, I don't know how to say this line. He goes, great, the part of you that knows how to say the line will show up. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna trust myself to give you the message as to what I'm working with here because I battle with it myself. Like, hmm, I know exactly who I am, but how can we get deeper? if? A leader has to have self-mastery, right? Then it's important to know who this self is. Currently, I'm developing um, what I call a triple threat concept, which is, uh, yes, I'm good at fitness. I'm very good at fitness. I'm very good at coaching. I'm decent at music, and I'm not that good at marketing. I'm, that's actually my weakness is marketing. Admittedly, I have a degree in business, and it is in marketing. So it's kind of, it's kind of sad. <laughs> So, in any case, uh, I wanted to come on here and go over to who my strengths are, okay? And, and also, I think that it would serve the purpose as to wh who should watch my videos. Well, first and foremost, I started out my, my stuff, my life in sports. You know, just like a, I had a good imagination as a kid. I would play Hot Wheels, little Hot Wheel cars. My mom would come home from work. She would work at a factory in making clothes for Hagers. Uh, it's, a, it's like a nice little clothing for gentlemen. And she'd make suits and pants. She'd always look at stuff like she would, like a suit like this, she would look at the seams and be like, hmm, it's well made or not. And I always, I think I got my taste in clothes from my mom. Anyways, long story short, coming back to what I was saying is that uh, she would come back home, home from work uh, from the factory and she would start cleaning the house. You immediately just start cleaning the house. I'd always just see this, just cleaning the house. And I, I remember being put in a state, now it's all coming to me now. I remember being put in a state of panic. Like I felt like, oh man, like a guiltiness. Like I'm gonna make a video on guilt actually here in a bit. Uh, I remember I felt guilty, like, oh my mom works so hard. And I, I always wanted to do too, do hard too, uh, work hard too. She would always tell me, she would always take me to the, the crops where people were working. And she goes, if you don't go to college, you're gonna end up working in those fields. And that's, I remember, and we didn't have central air at the time. And I remember feeling like, man, if I could only get a house and a wife and a car, uh, that'd be great. And I'm gonna go to college and do that, right? So that's how, so I would see my mom come home and do, she'd do Jane, Jane Fonda videos. So that's my, these are some of my first memories. My dad was a, a furniture sales, Man. He he was known in the small town. Everyone would know, hey, uh, Thacho, how you doing? Or Anastasio, his name's Anastasio. And, you know, they would all greet him and everyone would know him and he'd be known. I was like, man, my dad's cool. Everybody knows him, whatever. And he put me in a baseball. We were into sports. I've played 
I played baseball, football, uh, skating, right? So I remember my childhood being full of sports again. And my dad was, was in sales, right? And so then he would, we, they had their own furniture store. I remember I'd be watching Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood as a kid, and then my dad would be getting ready. He would put on his deodorant. He'd be getting ready to go to, uh, to work. You know, I think to myself, and I was like, man, maybe that's why I always put on deodorant. I don't know. Like, you know, I would just watch my dad always get ready, put his deodorant on, shh, and uh, his cologne, and I, 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 I'm wearing cologne right now. Like, I think to myself, hmm, how much did my dad, you know, in a way, train me, right? And so, sales, and then that was, that was my early childhood. I would see that, right? And then my teenage years, I remember the first time, the first time I saw a guitar, it was an electric guitar, I think it was at a church or something, and they were playing an electric guitar at a church, and I thought, wow, and that, that visual stayed in my head for a while. I would think about that guitar consecutively, like, hmm, when am I gonna get an electric guitar? I thought, I remember thinking that the electric guitar was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. It was like one of those emotions that I got, like my imagination would go to it, and I remember feeling it. And I actually have an electric guitar now. And you know, even as I say this now, it's like it's stuff is moving through me, emotions are moving through me. Anyway, so I never I didn't get one until I was a teenager. My mom bought one for me. God bless her soul. She's uh, she's awesome. Uh, she bought me as a te bought me one as a teenager, and I was into partying at that time. I didn't really play it as much as I should. I didn't have any lessons. I didn't know how to play. There wasn't YouTube like this. So um, now, in my teenage years, I wanted to be a rock star, right? Like Green, my favorite bands were Green Day, The Doors, Nirvana, uh, just heavy rock metal bands. Okay, I'd always I grew up listening to Mariah Carey, stuff like that. So I have a pretty uh, well-rounded pop taste in music. So pop music and rock were really influential. Here's where I started looking into poetry because of Jim Morrison and Kurt Cobain. That's where poetry entered the picture, and then then came writing and philosophy and the aspects of that. So the so this was a key moment to my discovery of philosophy and and the study the philosophy. I'll just put my notes misspelled, but the st the study of truth. This is where that entered the picture. Okay. Then I got into acting. Um, acting was, a, I feel, a natural draw because I wanted to be a rock star. I got into acting, and that was what I wanted. I, when I first declared my major in college, I was a drama major. So I graduated high school, I got into drama. Now, during this time, I'll take a break, time out. Now, in here somewhere, in, in this mess here, my family went through a divorce, and my dad, who always struggles and still to this day struggles with cerebral palsy, being overweight, he has diabetes, and I saw him always struggle with nutrition and his fitness. Being a young teenager, I, I always wanted to see if I could solve that issue in my own life and his life, and I, I got into nutrition studies and fitness studies. The other catalyst to that was I was always in sports, as I said earlier. And the final catalyst is, well, I had my own goals to be the best. I saw my dad struggle. And the last catalyst I saw was that I wanted to attract the right girl, uh, meaning there was this girl I loved. Her name was, I'll just call her Kat. And I was writing poetry about her and everything. And she once told me I had small calves. I felt so little, so, you know, like the, the geek that could never get the girl. And so I started working out. And here we are all these years later, I've built a fitness company, I sell supplements, I've trained trainers, I mean, like a lot of things happen because of that. I've trained people to lose a lot of weight, get in shape. A lot of things happen because of this big, all of this right here. Because of my understanding of psychology and philosophy, I was able to coach people beyond just like, well, do it. Like I understood that people had a psychology to them and I had to work with them and stuff. So. Then around here, around my, so in the, let's just say for the 10 years, that was composed of bodybuilding, bodybuilding, supplement sales, and college. I uh, got into business school. And then furthermore, what happened after that, after getting into business school and, and the career in cycling and yoga, meditation, cycling, yoga, bodybuilding, CrossFit, building my evolution training department stat, got established in 2011. Here are 2006, and yeah, it's it's all been this one big birth that started with sports, sales, 
seeing my dad in business and uh, music and just being passionate about being energized and having music. And so then, here we are all these years later. Um, what I'm looking to do now is use all of my skills, whether it's communications, coaching, uh, philosophy, psychology, to develop leadership in myself, in my organization, and in people just like you. Uh, yeah, that's the that's general gist of it. Has there been some awesome success along the way? For me, it's been the success of getting to know myself, getting closer to self-mastery, uh, getting to the point where here I am creating videos, reaching out to a global audience, and more specifically, the people that can resonate with this. You know, I grew up watching, uh, listening to Eminem, and now I'm listening to Meditation Bells, you know? So it's, it's really an evolutionary process. So I'm looking to connect with people that understand that this is my past. I mean, this is, this is what I'm about. And if you look at some of the work that I'm doing below, if you look at some of the work that I'm doing below, in my videos here, or my, my website, whatever, you'll find that uh, there's plenty there for you to work with if you're in this, into the same sort of stuff here. And I, I wanted to give this to you so you can, one, see what's your own strengths, you know? My strengths happen to be um, music driven, I'm into comedy, I'm into fitness, psychology, philosophy, uh, and communications. That's, and the spirituality. Like, those are my key draws. In other words, I'm not a great, let's say, I'm not, I'm not into hunting. That's what I'm getting at. So, that isn't my greatest skill is, like, being a marksman. Make sense? So, I just wanted to show you, like, I would like to if I had the time and the money and the resources to develop a little shooting. I might, but I mainly want to own what I am. And this is a, an invitation for you to own who you are, right? Uh, this is pretty much what it's been been about. I can't really think that there's been much more that's not here. I mean, music, like DJing, playing guitar, uh, relationships. I've, been, I've had some really passionate relationships. And I think I've always been a lover type person. And then uh, psychology, philosophy, really owning myself in leadership and the studies of leadership. And... CrossFit, bodybuilding, the the desire for evolution and strength and being one's best self. And then now moving into the being uh, a business person, entrepreneur at the higher level, that's can the continual evolution into moving forward to the next level of my work. Okay, so, but this is the origins there. And I wanted to show this to you because you have your own origins and those are mine. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm leaving anything out there. I, I plan to... Uh, get my DNA tested to see like where exactly my genealogy, my bloodlines come from and everything. And the reason being is that I just, I'm not trying to be who I'm not. This is what I'm saying. I'm really looking to be who I am. That was a challenge I had. And so I think that in the past, people were sometimes trying to be who they're not. And now we are moving where people need to be exactly who they are to the T because that's who they can rely on consistently. Okay. And then, so yeah, uh, hopefully this does help you out to start a brainstorm. This video here is mainly for uh, a leader that really is looking to hone in their identity, okay? And so I, th I think the, the, sometimes we can get caught up in the, in the bustle of comparing ourselves to others and we don't own up who we are, all right? This is Jacob Adams. If this has helped you in any way, I'd love to hear below your comments, your ideas. My number is 512-994-7328. I'd love to talk to you, see what see what you got from it. See what, in, in just 10 minutes, you know, just talk for 10 minutes on the phone, even through Skype or FaceTime, whatever, uh, and see what, what makes you tick. See what is exactly, you know, your strengths. And maybe you're, maybe you're a great huntsman. Maybe you're a great hunter. Maybe you're a great rapper. I don't know. I'm not a great rapper. <laughs> So just to talk about your strengths and then you can even go to evolutiontraining.net and download a free video on uh, how to maximize who you are and where to put the focus of your energy as to where to maximize. You're seeing my life right now unfold in front of you, um, you know, so you know I'm doing exactly what I preach, self-mastery. Uh, one of the things I'm working on is, like I said, common sense self-mastery. It's not getting away from the, the beauty of common sense just because it's known, but to truly 
master oneself, you have to embrace common sense. So that's why I'm working on common sense self-mastery. This is Jacob Adams uh, signing off. Love to hear it below. There you have my number. Go to subscribe, share. We'll see you next time. Stay awesome. Peace.